So, hello to everyone. Today we'll talk about uh, hidden Markov models. This is a sequence classifier. And today's agenda is, uh, firstly, we'll talk about machine learning models. Uh, in the previous session, we were talking about uh, naive Bayes classifier and random forest, uh, both applied to named entity recognition and uh, role detection from text. Uh, next, we'll uh, overview data representation for these models. Uh, and then present hidden Markov models with Viterbi algorithm implementation. And uh, lastly, we'll give an overview of uh, the usage of this model. Uh, so this picture is from the uh, paper of Sutton and McCallum. Uh, here we see a naive base classifier uh, and his conditional, uh, its conditional uh, twin is logistic regression. Uh, the difference between this line and this line is that these classifiers is that these classifiers are uh, conditional or discriminative models, and uh, classifiers in this line are generative models. Uh, the key difference is that uh, by the generative models, we try to model uh, the distribution of uh, probability of uh, x and y. Uh, while at the conditional models uh, or discriminative models, we model uh, the probability of uh, x uh, given, uh, of y given x. Uh, so uh, in the last session, uh, we presented naive base, and today we'll, we'll talk about hidden Markov models. Uh, the key difference between these two models is that naive base uh, models just one value or class, while hidden Markov models models a sequence of values. Uh, and here is uh, some explanation of generative models uh, further. Uh, as we said, uh, generative models learn a distribution of uh, probability of uh, x and y. Uh, and often we uh, encode this in this uh, uh, product. Uh, and the output of the model is uh, the final value uh, when we tr try to uh, infer the uh, y's, uh, while in our examples we'll have uh, training examples uh, as a sequences, uh, which will be like x1, x2 to xn, and corresponding sequences will be uh, y1, y2 to yn. Normally in uh, text mining or natural language processing. Uh, these are words and these are some text. Uh, text can be, uh, for example, uh, location, person, or other. Uh, in, the, in this slide, we see an example of input sequence. And the uh, output uh, is, for example, text sequence containing a part of speech text. These uh, texts uh, refer to noun, verb, uh, preposition, adverb, and so on. Uh, and as we see, each word uh, contains a separate uh, part of speech tag. And uh, the final result of the classifier is to infer the whole sequence at once and not every, uh, and not the tag for every word separately. Uh, another example is, for example, in name entity recognition. For example, uh, here we have the same sequence, but uh, in the output we uh, like to get that Boeing company is uh, a company, that Wall Street is a location, and the Alan Mulally is a person. Uh, so how to encode this uh, for sequence classifier? In this example, we encode it uh, similarly uh, by, uh, let's say, Boeing company. We encode it like uh, start, co start, co the start token for company and continuous token for company. Uh, generally, there is also another uh, notation used in papers, which is IOB notation. These notations, uh, for example, if we model person, uh, we would uh, have B person, which is beginning of a person, inside of person, for every consecutive token that uh, uh, follows uh, the first token and other, uh, and which other is uh, some other token, like here is no entity, for example. 
so when we have uh, when we are dealing with text, uh, we need to do some pre-processing to prepare data for these classifiers. Uh, and with this pre-processing, uh, we first need to detect uh, sentences. Uh, it may seem like an easy example, easy task, but uh, it is uh, it is not that easy as it sounds because you can have many uh, possible options when to finish the sequence. Uh, and the next uh, thing is tokenization. When we have sentences, we need to uh, identify specific tokens from the uh, sentences to get uh, the sequences like this. Um, and then further we can uh, enrich these sequences with some uh, additional features. With these hidden Markov models, uh, by default, it doesn't support to include some other features uh, like we, were, we saw that at Naive Base, when we have a data table, a lot of features and class. Uh, in uh, hidden Markov models, uh, as we'll see, we just model uh, transitions between these uh, tokens and labels. Um, so these other features can be, uh, for example, uh, normalization. Uh, here we have stemming and thematization. Uh, stemming is uh, just uh, statistical, yeah, finding the root of a, a word, but this root doesn't have meaning. Uh, lemmatization is, on the other hand, uh, the primary uh, word, uh, or, or how would I say, osnon oblica. Uh, yeah, Korean. It's not the root, it's a um, uh, general form of the word. Uh, and it depends on the context. Uh, and then we can add some additional lab labeling, like part of speech, parse trees, and so on. Uh, so what does uh, the hidden Markov models uh, do? Uh, let's say we have uh, input sequence and uh, text sequence. This is a sequence we need to infer and uh, we'll use a hidden Markov model to model these both sequences at once. Uh, and as a result, we want to uh, take the argument to the maximum of probability of both sequences. In this example, uh, let's say we have a sentence uh, x1 to xn, uh, from which xi can be from the vocabulary v, which is, for example, uh, let's say the dog barks, and so on, and uh, the target labeling, which is from uh, a set S, which is, for example, uh, determiner noun, verb, preposition. If we take a look uh, at the uh, part of speech tagging, and uh, we'll add a special stop symbol uh, at the end uh, to, to enable uh, the, full, uh, the full inference. Uh, and because of uh, this uh, token here, uh, as we see, we have a yi uh, given y i min minus 1 and 2, uh, we'll add special symbols uh, star at the end of the sequence. Uh, uh, star, stars, at the, end, at, at the beginning of the sequence, uh, which don't, uh, we just enable to write the, the uh, hidden marker model in this form. Uh, let's have now uh, let's see now one, one example. Uh, for example, if we uh, have uh, input sequence the dog laughs and we want to see the probability of the tagging sequence determiner, noun, verb, and stop, uh, we would, uh, we would uh, enumerate and uh, then uh, and multiply these uh, tokens. 
uh, as we see here we have uh, as uh, written before uh, the label uh, tokens uh, given previous two tokens and uh, emission probabilities uh, for the words uh, given uh, labeling tokens. Uh, all these probabilities uh, are learned from the training data set uh, because when training the uh, hidden Markov model we just need to go through the training set and populate uh, these um, internal structures uh, which are then uh, used at inference. So uh, when uh, we'll inference for this sentence, we will just take a look in the, our internal uh, structure, what is the prob uh, probability of dog given n. This is one uh, probability that was uh, learned from the training set. Not learned, but counted from the training set. Uh, so now we can ask ourselves, uh, where did the name come from, hidden Markov models? Uh, we all have heard of uh, Markov property. Uh, for example, here we see uh, Q of y, uh, yj given j min minus 1 minus 2. This is uh, for example, uh, Generally, um, you, would, uh, uh, you would need to know the whole sequence to the beginning. So if I have uh, JY, uh, I would need to know uh, the whole sequence from JY minus 1 to, to, to Y0. Uh, uh, and by following uh, the Markov property, uh, this uh, can be then rewritten uh, as an as assumption that uh, the current the current uh, yj depends only on the previous previous two uh, tokens which are yi minus 1 and yi minus 2 uh, this is uh, let's say trigram model we could also use a bigram model, which would depend only on the previous uh, token, or we could also use higher order models. The only difference is uh, when we train hidden Markov models, we need to uh, see all these uh, triplets or possibilities to populate our internal structure. Uh, when, because then when we in infer, we need to have a number for specific uh, for specific uh, properties uh, inside the function. Uh, and why is hidden? Hidden is because uh, we don't know the structure of which is between these uh, labels. Uh, as we can uh, uh, as we can represent this. Uh, Transition probabilities uh, can be presented like a graph. Uh, and for example, uh, yi can go to, uh, this, uh, this is not general, this can be, let's say, uh, let's say the determiner can be followed just by noun. Th this can be model structure of, let's say, part of a graph and needs to be uh, needs to be uh, encoded in these uh, probabilities, but generally, uh, by using ergodic model, uh, if you read the paper, uh, this can be uh, that uh, we have let's say here verb and preposition. Uh, generally every token or label is connected to every other token. So we have a full graph. But we can give uh, some conditions on it. Uh, so, for example, if we see this formula, and uh, let's say we have training data, uh, what can happen uh, if uh, in new sentence we get a 
token uh, which was unseen in training data. For example, uh, in let's say this is a test sentence, and uh, let's say Mulali. Uh, Mulali is a rare word, uh, so let's say it wasn't contained in the training data set. What is the problem here at, in this formula? As we see here, we have just multiplying. And if we multiply one number with zero, the whole model is zero. That's this problem. So we can solve this by uh, using uh, uh, by using some uh, smoothing, uh, like uh, in the previous talk we were talking about smoothing uh, at naive base uh, using Laplacian estimate. Uh, and in this uh, particular problem, we can uh, we can then uh, solve. Uh, solve it differently. Uh, for example, uh, as follows. We split the vocabulary in two sets. Uh, for the one set, we take frequent words. These are, for example, words like stop words uh, that are very general. And uh, is high probability they will appear in a test uh, uh, data set and low frequency words. These are all other words that uh, are sometimes labeled with uh, uh, our target labels we are interested in. So we, uh, in the second step, we map these uh, frequency words into some predefined uh, shapes. Uh, this is, uh, on the other hand, the only way we could also use uh, features for our hidden Markov models. Uh, because, for example, uh, we, as you'll see uh, in uh, further models uh, in the next talks, or if we take a look back to naive base, we could model uh, that, uh, let's example, uh, for example, that this word contains digits can be just one uh, feature or attribute for uh, naive base. But here, we cannot have features, but can encode this with, let's say, word classes uh, for the words that, uh, uh, that, that comply to uh, our intuition and, let's say, example here. So uh, if we'll have a capital word uh, followed by a period, uh, let's say that uh, this is often uh, labeled as a person name, uh, the hidden Markov model will learn uh, appropriate probability to tag this uh, type of words. So if we now take a look of our training uh, uh, data, previously we had uh, data uh, it, uh, represented as words, and now we transform it to uh, these uh, word classes. Uh, for its internal representation only. And the final result will be, uh, for example, if we take a look here, Boeing company, uh, the word class is now init cap and company. And when inferring, uh, we will learn uh, how uh, likely is that uh, init cap is, uh, for example, uh, stands for a company uh, a token. So if we go now uh, back to uh, Viterbi algorithm, uh, as uh, we said earlier, uh, this is the uh, final result we need to learn, uh, we'll infer. And this is the whole hidden Markov model. So let's say we have uh, this formula. formula. Uh, why shouldn't we uh, just learn the model on brute force fashion? For example, we, we know these, uh, all these tokens because we see them. 
and uh, we have a fin finite domain of target labels. What is the problem if we try to um, brute force uh, to estimate the final probability of a sequence? Huh? Okay, we can have now uh, one example. Let's say uh, we have uh, the truthful master. That's one of the tables. Let's say the dog barks. And uh, given this uh, domain of target labels, we would need to check all possible sequences uh, from, let's say, D, D, D to D, D, N, going on, and what would be the appropriate uh, target sequence? D, N, V, which is determiner, noun, and verb and so on. And uh, if we take a look of the all possibilities we need to we needed to calculate is on the every step we needed um, to to check uh, uh, the size of uh, target uh, target set uh, target value set uh, this is uh, s uh, uh, times s times s which is S power three in our example, and if we had a sequence of length n, this would be uh, the com of complexity S power uh, on power n, uh, which is uh, too much to uh, to be uh, used on real data. So. Uh, that is why uh, we will use Viterbi algorithm. This is uh, by using uh, dynamic programming. Uh, let's say uh, we had uh, two more uh, target labels, which are stars, uh, and this is only uh, to be. Uh, this is only because of this formula uh, to not have exceptions. Um, and uh, other uh, target labels are as before. And now we define uh, the R function, uh, which defines what are uh, the uh, target labels from the beginning to the uh, kth uh, symbol. For example, we will uh, we'll have uh, R1, uh, R2, and R3. And we will... Uh, uh, build these uh, values uh, from the beginning to the end. Uh, and now we define uh, also a function p, uh, which is a function of k, uh, which defines uh, what is the maximum probability of a tag sequence, uh, let's say of a tag sequence here, given uh, u and v before. And this is just uh, how is it's formal written. Uh, so if we now take a look of one example, uh, let's say we have a sentence, the man's let's say the Man saw the dog. With a telescope. And uh, here are the uh, observable tokens, which are words. And 
now we'd like to infer the whole sequence. Uh, to uh, take a look of the dynamic programming, uh, we can first uh, start here, like uh, we write all uh, target labels, which are D, N, V, P, and uh, here are positions, which is first position, second position, third position, and so on. And now, the, the whole idea is to build uh, uh, from the beginning to the end uh, the values of on the every step we check uh, two consequent uh, uh, sets of pairs and uh, then at the end we define the maximum values for each uh, token. So if we are on the second step we define what would be the maximum probability if the previous token was this or this or this or this and then write it here and then repeat that for every uh, other labels and continue to the end. Uh, so uh, if we would like then to, uh, let's say, uh, if we have built this, uh, this net for to the seven, uh, and we would check here if this is determiner and preposition. The formula formula we would need to check for the seventh token would be as as written before. Uh, would be that p of seven uh, p d is the maximum of w where w can be of d, n, v, or p. And here we calculate the previous uh, uh, values from the uh, previous uh, step uh, and take uh, w, p uh, times q which is transi transition probability that was learned by the model, uh, which is D given WP times uh, emission probability. Uh, here we have word D given uh, determiner. And uh, if we take a look of uh, uh, this formula, we see, uh, we see that uh, for each pair, for each pair here, we need to uh, calculate uh, four uh, possibilities. And this is of complexity of the size of uh, target label set. And uh, to build the net for the next step, we need to uh, try all possibilities uh, on for two consequent uh, labels. And uh, we would repeat that uh, of size of uh, target labels, uh, power of two. Uh, this would be uh, the computational uh, computation for inference at one step. Uh, And uh, if we take a look of uh, the whole uh, time complexity of the algorithm uh, now, we see that we have a sequence of n tokens, and for every token we need uh, s power uh, three time. So the complexity of the algorithm would be then uh, n times size of target label set power three. Is that uh, clear? Okay. So uh, 
the full implementation of Viterbi algorithm is uh, shown here. Uh, we get input uh, sentence, which here was the main uh, solder doc with a telescope. Uh, learned parameters, uh, which are transi transition probabilities between labels and emission probabilities uh, for words. Uh, this is learned from the training data or read from the training data. Uh, for the initialization, uh, we take that uh, P of zero uh, star star is one. This is just for, for the beginning. Let's say we have here zero, zero. Uh, and here is definition uh, like before. And then for every K from one to N, that means from the beginning of a sentence to the end of a sentence, uh, we calculate uh, P for uh, every uh, pair of uh, target labels. And then uh, this is just a back pointer to save what was, the, uh, what was this W. That means what was the label which achieved the maximum on this step. Uh, so this is argument to the maximum. Uh, and at the end, we calculate uh, the last two uh, labels uh, and uh, then back propagate uh, from the maximum. Uh, because when we have, uh, when we have this uh, net, to the end, we uh, have now here some probabilities. And let's say this is a maximum. Uh, for the last two, we uh, calculated uh, the value directly. And now we have to back propagate uh, for, from this uh, table of back pointers to get the full, the full target label sequence. And using this algorithm, we get uh, the corresponding label sequence to the input sequence. And then, and at the last step, we return this sequence. So uh, if we overview the algorithm, uh, we have uh, already uh, explained the uh, time complexity. Uh, the positive side is that it is simple to train. We just need to uh, read probabilities uh, between uh, of transitions of uh, target labels and uh, emissions of word to target label from the training set. Uh, and it performs relatively well on uh, named entity recognition data sets according to uh, other known approaches. Uh, the problem here is that uh, if we try to model some uh, complex domains or uh, we would like to add uh, some additional features, uh, which we were talking about at the start of the session, uh, it, is, uh, it is complex to, to achieve this because we need to uh, uh, use that uh, word classes uh, like we were, uh, like in the example here, if you remember. So if we define some uh, combined features. Uh, so in the next session, uh, we'll talk about uh, linear regression and conditional random fields. Uh, conditional random fields are uh, in contrast to hidden Markov models, discriminative model and uh, can, uh, and in that algorithm we can include uh, some, uh, a lot of features or uh, more specifically feature functions uh, that are calculated uh, for each test set. But this will come uh, in the next two months. Uh, here I have included some references uh, good references, Coursera course, Natural Language Processing by Michael Collins. 
uh, from which I uh, took some slides. Uh, and then uh, initial paper on Hidromarco models is from Rabiner from 1989. Uh, and uh, here is uh, just a paper uh, for the word classes uh, mapping uh, we have shown. And here is a, a nice introduction uh, to conditional random fields, which also includes uh, hidden Markov models. And uh, this will be all. <laughs> Any questions? Is it your cat? <laughs> no, it's, it's not my cat. That, that's random Google cat. <laughs> Ray Charles sketch. <laughs> How much of this is also applicable to Slovenian language? Uh, everything is applicable to Slovenian language. The problem is that uh, Slovene is highly inflected uh, language. That means uh, every word can be represented in many forms. Uh -huh. uh, and uh, there is also a lack of data sets to learn these uh, models. Uh, we actually we got one data set containing uh, 500,000 words uh, which uh, has tagged only uh, persons, locations, dates uh, and some other two uh, entity types and this is all for Slovene from the field of data sets because we need a data set to, to train the model these or conditional random fields or any other to perform inference. Okay, thank you for listening and see you next time. <laughs>